Hey guys, check this out. Beautiful Texas home style chili. This is a bowl of chili that you're absolutely going to love. This recipe, it rocks. Wait till you try it. Hey guys, welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. Hey, on this episode, we're going to be making some chili. This is Texas home style chili with beans. Folks, it's going to be delicious. Now, if you've tried my Texas red chili, you know I know how to make chili. But I wanted to give you something that was a little more tame than that. That chili can, well, it can peel paint, all right? This chili, a little more down to earth. The kids seem to like it a little bit better and it has a lot more in it so it can feed a lot more folks, okay? Now I'm gonna be making a big batch of chili. If you want, just simply cut this recipe in half and it gets a little more reasonable for you. But this is gonna be a big pot. So I'll tell you what, come on over. Let's look at these fabulous ingredients that we have here and let's get busy making the best tasting chili that you'll ever eat in your life. Come on over guys. <laughs> Notice what we have is a fantastic array of ingredients. And starting here in the background, let's look at this. I've got a pot of pinto beans that I cooked up. Now what I did is I took one half pound of pintos, soaked them off, then cooked them up. They're nice and tender, they're ready to go. So I'm adding these to the chili. This isn't something you have to put in, but boy, I tell you what, a lot of people like their chili with beans and those that do are really gonna love this. So all I did is just cook up basic pintos and I've salted this, but there's no other seasoning there. In addition, we've got some beef over here. Now this recipe, the way I'm preparing it, calls for about three pounds of beef. So if you're gonna be preparing, of course, your beans and you're using a half uh, recipe on this one, then you might consider one and a half pounds of beef and a quarter pound of the pinto beans. Now when I say quarter pound, I mean dried before you cook them. We have these poblano chilies. Now, I wanna say this, the poblano is wonderful. It has a flavor that's not totally dissimilar from the jalapeno, but it doesn't ha have the heat of the jalapeno. It's much, much milder. It has fabulous flavor. And I think if you're gonna be making chili, then it honestly needs to have its namesake in there. So we have these poblano chilies. We're also gonna be putting in some chipotle and Tabasco and paprika. The chipotle is in this product right here and it's fantastic. We'll get to that in just a minute. I have some onions here also. Now, as so you will know on the proportions on these onions and poblanos, you're gonna be looking for about one and a quarter to one and a half pounds of each of these to three pounds of chuck, okay? And we're gonna take that chuck and grind it here in a little bit. In addition, you're gonna be wanting garlic. We're looking at anywhere from six to eight cloves of garlic. Back here, let's take a look at our spices. To flavor this up, to make it really good, we're gonna be using, of course, some salt. And here's your, your uh, measurements on this, and it's an easy way to remember. It's one to two tablespoons of salt, three tablespoons of cumin, four tablespoons of Tabasco brand Chipotle sauce. It's much milder than their, regi their original sauce. Five tablespoons of paprika, six to eight cloves of your garlic, and then we're gonna be putting in some olive oil, anywhere from a oh, roughly quarter to half a cup of olive oil. And if you'll notice, I've got some beer up here. This one's for me, but this one goes in the chili. You don't have to put beer in your chili, folks. You get to put beer in your chili, but if you're going to do it, use a beer that's at least an amber or better, uh, meaning an amber or darker. Uh, an amber, a porter, uh, maybe nothing as dark as a stout, but possibly a bock. This will give you a good malty flavor to this dish. It's really tasty and every bit of the alcohol cooks out when you do this right. Over here, tomatoes. 
I have 30 ounces of diced tomatoes in their own juice, and I have 12 ounces of tomato paste. This is going to add acid to this dish. Now, some people might say, hey, real chili con carne does not have tomato in it. But guess what? I didn't say I was making chili con carne, did I? No, we are making Texas home style chili with beans. So let's get on with this beautiful dish. We have to start by grinding up that meat. And so you will know, as I mentioned on the beans, just follow the package recipe on those guys. And once they're cooked up and ready to go, they're ready to go. We're gonna be using some of their juice and all of the beans. It's time that we get on with grinding up this meat. Now the grinder I'm using is one that fits as an attachment on my uh, mixer, which you know, when you have one of these mixers that'll handle a lot of attachments and it's really strong, it's, it's great to have attachments like that because you can do so much without having a bunch of different machines. Let's go ahead and cut this down into pieces that'll fit into a grinder. And I'm just gonna make this real simple. I'm cutting some cross cuts here. Let's take a look at the business end of this. When you're using one of these guys, they're absolutely wonderful. I just start feeding the meat down the tube and let its auger take it on in. Guys, you want to stand to the side. Don't stand in front of that nozzle because sometimes it spits, meaning it's going to shoot blood out of it. And when it does that, it doesn't discriminate for whatever's in front of it. And there we have it, guys. Beautiful. And you know exactly what is in your ground meat when you do your own grinding. It's also so much more delicate and soft. It comes out wonderful. And you get to grind the quality of beef that you want, whether it be, you know, select or choice or whatever. Beautiful meat transferred. Now guys, we have to prepare our vegetables. And that means doing some cutting and dicing and things like that. The chilies though, I want to go ahead and remove the skin from the outside of these chilies. Any high direct heat will do the trick. So if you have a kitchen torch, that will work. All right? You don't have to scorch the skin off, but now, frankly, I don't really like having a lot of um, chili or pepper skin in my chili, okay? It's just yuck. So I'm gonna crank these burners up to full. When you are preparing any kind of chilies in this way, not only is it gonna put a beautiful odor in the air, but it's also gonna release some of that capsaicin and it can make your eyes burn. If you're not used to this, make sure that there is some good ventilation near where you're cooking. That way you don't have to worry too much about this. It'll, it'll make you cry the same way an onion will, basically, but uh, it feels a little bit different because it's, it's a pepper release, it's capsaicin. You know, on the bottom of this, if you'll notice, that chili has become blistered, it's changing color, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scorch them. I'm gonna turn them black all the way around. And then I'm just gonna simply wash all of that off. I find this charring gives them a good flavor also. Now again, on your proportions, anywhere from one and a quarter to one and a half pounds of chilies. Now guys, we need to get that skin removed from our poblanos. These are really easy to do. Just wash that skin off. I'm gonna push my finger in the side and then pull back the crown to open them up and get them ready for cutting. So this is really simple. Not easy. It's already starting to split on the sides. See there? All I have to do is just peel it back at the crown. It takes out that seed pod, crown, and all. Isn't that simple? You see, seeded. It's been deskinned. It's now. That's now ready to go ahead and get cooked up. I just gotta cut it and cook it. If you would, do all of yours the exact same way and we'll get caught up on the other side. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna dice these up and I'm looking for little squares that are about the size of, oh, three eighths of an inch to a half of an inch. 
Uh, the larger size would be fine, especially being that this is a hearty style chili, so we can have a lot of stuff on it. So what I'm looking to do is to cut about half inch wide strips here, just like so. Isn't that nice? There we have these beautiful big dice, just like I was looking for, and that's going to make a wonderful chili. Go ahead, cut up all of your poblanos in this way. Wow, that looks good. Yummy. I'm going to be making large dice this time, the same way we did with the uh, poblano. Bring my knife in, put your fingers directly on top, gathered together, just like this. Gently guide your knife through. You don't have to cut all the way. It doesn't hurt to leave it intact. It makes it easier to work with to do so. Turn that onion. Make your down cuts. And these are the cuts that are running this way. And then we'll make our cuts this way and get our beautiful dice. There. There. Good wide dice. Look at that. Now, when I make my cross cuts, I will have a most perfect diced onion. Here's an easy way for you to try to remove the paper from your garlic. I just give it a simple twist. Not so hard that it breaks the clove inside, but what that does is it just simply breaks that paper free. Isn't that neat? Another joint. And you'll feel it kind of flex, and you'll feel it pop and snap, and when it does, it's loose. You just get medieval on it, folks. It's time for us to get on with making our chili. I have just put a flame underneath this pot, which I have placed, of course, the beef, as you saw earlier, and all of the vegetables. I just poured them right down in there. Now, it's important when you start cooking this dish to go ahead and have those vegetables ready to put down in the meat. That's the reason you saw all of this prep going on long before any cooking was happening. We had to get everything ready. There we go. Heat's in our pot. Let me put in some olive oil here. Now I'm just gonna keep stirring this every few minutes. About, oh, every five to eight minutes, I'll open the lid and go at it. Okay guys, let's take a look down in here. Oh, look at that. I have lowered my heat to a medium. Now the meat itself is brown all the way through, but as you can see, these onions are still a little bit on the white color side, and I want to get them just slightly more translucent. So I want to give this, oh, about another 10 minutes. Now guys, we've come to the point where I've got that translucency that I needed in those onions. It's just perfect. Okay, so the meat's brown, the onions have become a nice light translucent. Great. All I need to do now is get the other ingredients in this and get them started up. I'm going to start with those tomatoes. And the next thing I want to add is that tomato paste. And we're just going to work it throughout it. And then we're going to try to get it hydrated out. Okay? Now the tomatoes and tomato paste what that does for a chili like this, it has acid in it, first of all. And that acid is bringing flavor to the surface. It's allowing your tongue to recognize flavors in the pot that normally they, it may have not noticed as well. And it brings, oh, just brings together a pot of chili. Let's go ahead and put that garlic in there. Oh, yeah. Earlier, I mentioned about a tablespoon of salt to two tablespoons. Well, that's about one. And we're going to start right there. And we'll put in that beer. And let that get all foamy. Now, so you'll know, 
alcohol boils at a much, much lower temperature than does water. So what's going to happen here is that alcohol, right now, it's starting to boil. That's what you're hearing. The alcohol is going to release in a vapor first before the water does. And as it does so, it just kicked off into the air. In a little bit here, there will be no alcohol left in this pot because it will have all evaporated right out. So don't be afraid of the alcohol that goes in there from your beer bottle. So one to two tea or tablespoons with the salt. Next, we're gonna put our cumin in here. And yes, I can do this accurately with my hand. Now, I learned this after a period of time. And that was, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I would practice this. And what I would do is I would measure first into a spoon and put it in my hand. And do that over and over and over again until I learned to recognize it. And then I, over a period of time, would then do it in my hand but occasionally measure it just to make sure I was still dead on. And over the years, sure enough, I got to where I could measure dead on every single time in my hand. Sometimes it's not too practical, okay? Like right now, I'm going to put some of this Tabasco chipotle flavored tabasco sauce i normally don't like to tout brand names guys but this stuff it's the real deal and it's good one two three four i am going to wash off any of the excess right down here in that chili our next item was paprika and it was five tablespoons of paprika Yummy. One, two, three, four, five. And that's going to give this chili a beautiful red color in addition. It's all about flavor. We're wanting to keep all of the flavor we can in here. So I'm going to put some of my bean juice right down in there. In a little bit, we're gonna put the beans in there, but not now. See, remember, they were already cooked. So all I have to do is bring them up in temperature within the chili after I get this cooked up. Now I have a nice moist condition in here. We're gonna give it time for all of those ingredients to work together and cook. I have brought this up to a nice boil over medium heat. Once you get it like this, guys, Go ahead, give it one last stir. There we go. Look how hearty that is. We haven't even put the beans in. Okay, now I'm going to cover this and I'm going to reduce my temperature to low. At this point, I'm going to let this go ahead, sit here, and simmer. It will be simmering for about, oh, 30 to 40 minutes. That's just fine. That's a perfect amount of time. Then we're going to put our beans in there. After those go in, we're gonna simmer it once again, another 30 to 40 minutes. At that point, that chili's ready to go. So we have a beautiful, hearty, well-stocked chili, gorgeous color to it, fabulous flavors. You should smell this right now, guys. It's unbelievable smelling. Oh, I love making chili. So it's a matter of waiting now. This is when you get to kind of kick back and uh, relax. Okay guys, our chili has now had right at 30 minutes of simmer time on it. Okay. It's now time for me to put those beans in there. The whole thing. I'm going to once again bring my temperature back up to a medium. And I'm going to keep it there until those beans and the rest of this comes back up to a nice simmer. And then I'll take that temperature back down and we're gonna do another cook on it. And it's gonna be another 30 to 40 minute cook. And at this point, that's when you're really developing the full flavor on this because you get the flavor of the beans and the flavor of all that other stuff. And the longer it's marrying and cooking and simmering in there, the, the better the flavors get, guys. They just get richer and fuller and it's fantastic. So. Right now, it's just a matter of, we need to be patient, and this will get all fixed up and cooked up. 
So the idea there is to just barely creep those fingers and it will make a beautiful slivered onion for you. There we go. Beautiful, fine slivered onions, guys. This is just perfect. Just what we wanted. It makes a beautiful garnish on top of your chili. That's all there is to making a slivered onion. Just remember, steady rhythm and gently creep those fingers back. The slower you move, the thinner those slices get. And those are just like paper. Beautiful. Our chili has had plenty of time to simmer now. It has thickened up the way it should. It is a beautiful, hearty, thick chili. Oh, I can't wait. I love chili. Right now it is storming outside. So there's been rain and lots of lightning and hail and it's just going at it. So while that's going at it out there, we'll go at this in here. Take a look at this, guys. I think we should dress it up a little bit. Let's put some cheese. You know what? I just love cheese when it comes to my chili. But also, those slivered onions. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful homestyle chili, nice and hearty with slivered onions and cheese. Oh, guys, oh man, I can't wait. This stuff is just delicious. Beautiful, beautiful, hearty bowl of chili. Oh man, it's a bowl of flavors, what this is. Oh man, this is the bomb. Mm. Mm. Oh, dude. Mm. Oh. The flavors, this complex, beautiful harmony of flavors. The chilies, nothing hot, it's not burning my tongue. But it is spicy. It's rich and full-bodied. It's got good flavor to it. That tomato brings out so many other flavors. The acid in it. It works. It works so good. This is one of those recipes that's just off the hook good. And guys, if you haven't tried chili recipes like this before, you really need to give this one a shot. You're going to love it. I would like to say thank you very much to my viewers, all of you. To my subscribers, Guys, extra special thank you to you. And folks, if you haven't subscribed, well, please do and click the bell. It'll give you a reminder when my recipes come out. I've got great recipes coming, wonderful techniques, and shows that are just off the hook good, as you've seen here. So if you would, please share my videos. And you folks, well, to you, you have a good day.